for them in these forums. And if you can't make the meetings, we go and this table is all the paperwork from the recent meeting. So you can come here and get it in case you know, you're at work or something like that. And this is for all of the Southwest, Southwest Atlanta, Atlanta community? Region. This actual plan covers, it's a regional plan to help sustain us. Yes, Deja. Yeah, um, I just thought one reason I don't attend a lot of meetings is because I have two little boys, a two-year-old and a three-year-old. So how are That's there good. people that attend that have children that small, like, and how would that be for the children? You just show up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know. they're sitting there listening to an hour worth of neighborhood news. Okay. So you have to know. You would know. Yeah. Now, with my, and, and you can address where you live, because I, I can only speak to mine, but once you tell me yours, I can speak to yours. But the neighborhood I live in, they send out minutes. Okay. So you can still stay abreast. You just get on the mailing list, and they send out minutes. Okay. Some neighborhoods are really sophisticated. They have websites. You can go get the information. Well, we don't, have, we don't really have all this active. <laughs> the neighborhood I live in. But getting minutes as well, Deidre. Let me go through the rest of the city council, zoning review board. I'm telling you guys, we have we can make an impact in our neighborhoods. I'm concerned about the little store, corner store, they're putting up there and they want to sell something that I don't agree with, right? You need to visit an alcohol maybe or something, or some paraphernalia that I don't care for. And those are issues that have come up in my neighborhood, and I'm sure they're all over the city of Atlanta. And so you, you, I need to attend this zoning review board. You are, you are for renewal for your liquor license? Oh, we need to talk about, you know, the trash that we see. We need to talk about what we see coming in and out of the store. That's how your voice gets heard and you get engaged. School board PTA, the particular neighborhood I live in, that is adjacent to the Beltline. Um, we haven't had a lot of kids in our neighborhood, but it's changing. More families are coming in with kids. And I'm telling you, they're showing up at the PTA meetings about to make a change in Whiteford Elementary. I promise you in five years it's going to be a different school because people are engaged. Right? You gotta get engaged. Be active. Show up some kind of way. Voice your opinion. Voice your concern. Ask a question. You gotta get engaged at some level. You don't have to be the president of the association, but show up to the meeting from time to time, all right? Um, local media, of course, is always a way. And then the Atlanta Beltline meetings, right? So you can hear what's going on as it relates to the Beltline, taking the tour. I took the tour, I know, about 20 times, only because we were doing the tour <laughs> with Derek, Derek Duckworth yeah. and the RRC Center. Our families would come to home by education, and we'd haul off and take the tour. And I'm telling you, I loved it. And every time I took it, we're talking once a month, there would be a change. And I would get in some part of town, it's like, oh my God, that's changed. Oh my God, that's changed. And I can only imagine now, because I haven't been in a few years, <laughs> what I would see. So take the tour. Come to the Beltline meetings. They're held quarterly. Um, so find out when they're held, and just come. Show up and just kind of hear. Get on their website. Get on their email list. There's a lot of good information. Yes. There are also meetings that are um, more than quarterly. So they have monthly meetings, and there are ones that are in different neighborhoods. So you can actually go to a different neighborhood where there's a Beltline meeting if you're interested. Um, and then there are um, other meetings that might focus just on transportation, I think. So just check it out. They're all in the events calendar if you're interested in the Beltline.org website. Very good. So Beltline.org events. And it's good, good, uh, yeah, good information there. So we hope that today the information we've shared has been helpful to you, primarily as homeowners. Um, you know, again, I'm like I'm looking to stay in my neighborhood, or I'm looking to do some things differently, but I'm not sure what to do. I want to sell my home. We just wanted to give you some basic um, things to think about. I will say, Robbie, I'm gonna um, the Heckam piece. It, it came up. You know, I didn't add it to this, but it did come up. And Jeannie. Yeah. So. Um, I know it's a 1230 hour. Rob, did you want to add anything else? And then if not, we're going to have Jeannie come up and share heck on reverse mortgage for those of you who are interested. I just wanted to thank you so much for, for doing this. I hope everybody is yeah. Thank you all yeah. for, for coming. Um, please tell your friends we have two more. Of the, actually, one sold out. So we have one more uh, that still has available seats. But given the demand, I think we'll likely do more of these um, in, in communities, particularly here in Southwest Atlanta, but probably in, in other communities as well. And I do want to encourage you all, um, we have a number of things that you may be interested in, so maps, I know some people are asking back, where's the Beltline relative to where you live? Uh, we also have, uh, I believe, yeah, connected? Yes, yep. we also have flyers here, you are asking about the meetings of these. Uh, these get connected brochures will tell you about um, where to go to learn about uh, the dates for public meetings, all the tours, other ways that you can you can get connected with the Atlanta Free fitness calendar is yeah, in there. Free fitness, I mentioned those before. Uh, we offer the, we offer free fitness classes all over uh, around the whole 22 mile loop and feature bills and, and such. So this is our calendar for the point four. Uh, and 
We also have some information about our on the Atlanta Beltline. So, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Jeannie, will you come? And I promise you, let me just, if I may, while you're coming, over the years, yeah, because I've heard, and I'm, I'm being transparent, I've heard people say, oh, and I, if you don't mind, you know no, what I said, what I said, reverse mortgage, you're good. Like good. Like but, right, but it, it is a good product for the right person with many products. Um, so real quick on reverse mortgage, and just kind of the ins and outs of understanding who can get it and how it really can benefit you. I try to give it to my mom, but we don't know the so we can't, because I'm not here. Uh, reverse mortgage. Yeah, just reverse mortgage. What I like about this is it's what, what, what I call knowledge parity, which means you get the same information that everybody else has. That's one of the problems with housing, the, the homeowners people or the insurance people have information that you don't have, right? And so if you get knowledge parity, then you can make a decision about what's best for you. So the only thing I do is the reverse mortgage. It is for older adults. I don't call them seniors, call them older adults. Anybody that's 62 years of age or older has the opportunity to either refinance their home and get money out. You can use that money for repair. You can use it to keep up with your taxes. You can use it for long-term care. You can use it to avoid uh, foreclosure. You can use it to pay off your mortgage. You can use it for a variety of things. It's tax-free money. That's a refinance, right? It's an FHA program. I don't care what anybody has told you, what I call the street committee, right? People told you stuff. It ain't true. Find out the facts, and then you can make a decision about it. So you can use it to refinance if you're in the house and you need repairs. You can get that money. There's no payment. That's the big thing. You can take out a HELOC, but you have to qualify for it. And 30 days after you close, you have to start paying. With the with a heck of a reverse mortgage, you can take that money out. You don't pay for it. You don't make any mortgage payments until you die, move out of the house permanently, or the note says until you turn 150 years old. Okay. So essentially, it's your heirs who inherit the property and then have the opportunity to either sell the property or turn the property over to the bank. The bank doesn't take your house, you still have heirs. That's why when Vince said have a will, it's important, right? So that's one option, is to refinance to get money out, tax-free to do a variety of things. The other option is a purchase. Now that purchase has always been around. It's been around since 2008. You have the opportunity to downsize, move closer to your grandchildren, move on the belt line, move off the belt line, whatever you want. You have to bring money to the table. We make, we give you part of it. You bring the other part, and you're in a new house with no mortgage payment. That's the biggest part of my business these days. It came out in 2008 when people could buy houses for little or nothing, right? Values went down. People use that. They sell that house. Like I live in Grand Park. I live in the city. And we, we built a house years ago when we had three little boys. Now the three little boys are 22, 19, and 15. Like two of them are in college, right? So we don't need that big house anymore. So in my case, we may want to sell that house, pay off the mortgage, then I have some extra money because I have equity in my house. I can take that equity and decide I want to move somewhere else, and I can buy a house using a HECM if I'm 62. So I, the HECM, our reverse mortgage, will give me a percentage. The older you are, the more money you get. 62, so an 82 year old is going to get more money than a 62 year old. Okay? You, we give you part of the money, you bring the other to the table. Where am I going to get that other money? You sold your house. Or you might have money in investments. You can, whatever. We can, we, we can take that money, you can buy a house, you're in a new house, and you don't have a mortgage payment. The reason that's important two things 10,000 people turn 62 every day. 10,000. Every day. That's what do they call? What do they call? Baby, boom. baby boomers, right? Yeah, no. They're called baby boomers. And contrary to what some people believe, National Association of Realtors reported last year, 2015, 700,000 homes were sold to people who are 62 or older. That means people who are 62 year old or older are, are buying homes. They move it. They move it. They move it. I have an 80 year old client. She bought a, a condo. They're moving. Okay. And then the last thing that's impacting this and why it's important is that the whole issue of longevity. People are living longer. When Social Security was first implemented in 1934, the average lifespan was 69. Anybody can save enough money for four years to, to live. These days, the average lifespan is in their 80s. I have a client that's 98. She's, I mean, she's run out of money. She's run out of money. So 
it's important to get the facts. I know we don't have a lot of time. I did bring some brochures, and I'll put them over here in my car. If y'all have information, or if you want information, and you just, you know, Jeannie, I heard this. I always got a story. Jeannie, I heard this. You people, I have clients who use it, who live in these in-town neighborhoods, Reynoldstown, Inman Park, Grant, Grant Park, Ormwood Park. Their taxes are going up because the values are going up. They use it to pay their taxes, right? Just to keep up with their taxes. So get information if you know of anybody who's 62. Most of y'all are not 62, but yeah. guess what? You got you got grandparents, you got neighbors, you got aunts, uncles, right? You have all kinds of folks that you know. Tell people because if you could make the difference between people having a roof over their head and not. So let me ask you this question: You say um, they can leave it to their heirs, and then the children will make payments. No, so when they leave it to their heirs, their heirs inherit it, right? Because a dead person can't own property, right? And so the first thing that happens is that we get an appraisal to find out what the value is at that time, when they die. So, so then they can compare the outstanding balance with the, uh, the appraised value. If there's money to be had there, they're going to sell the house. North. They're not going to leave it on the table. 95% of people who inherit houses end up selling. Almost always they sell them. Even though the, the, the senior often will say, well, I'm going to leave this to my children. And I said, well, you need to talk to your children. Because your children usually don't want to go back to right. the loan that they take. So, yes, they have to pay off that loan, right? Just like a mortgage, any mortgage. If you had a house and you had a mortgage with Wells Fargo, and you sell it, you got to pay off the mortgage. Yeah. So the same thing with the reverse mortgage. You pay off that mortgage, and then anything left from that sale, y'all get to fight over. <laughs> or if you have a will, they get you inherit. You, you divide it up. Yeah, okay. That's a misconception. That that's a misconception. That, that it's a misconception that the bank takes you yeah, home. That is not true. Sure. It's not true. Sure. Oh, so the they're in there. Yes. Absolutely. Really. Whoever's the heirs inherits the house. We stay engaged. Oh, thank you. We talk about heirs and wills, so they don't. Absolutely. And that's the same way with a regular mortgage. It's no different than a regular mortgage. It's still recorded in the county deed record. Yes. I got, I got a couple of these. What am I dead for? My dad is going to be 90. Wow. Where do I put my car? Okay. Say, you invest at Lena? No, I'm with the Atlanta Bell Line Partnership. Tell me. How many organizations are with the Atlanta Bell Line? So you're at Atlanta Bell Line. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Atlanta Bell Line. Absolutely. So that's what I'm interested in. Atlanta Bell Line. Yeah. What did you do? I said that I had to keep it out that I know that maybe And they do operate under investment. Wow.